Go down. Uh-huh, and then you pick them from the base there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Nice. Like that. Yeah. And these are a nice thick ones. A good centre rush is these ones. But there's also some thin ones. Mm. Okay. Weaving ones. So you have a mixture of them in amongst the bundle. Yep. Yeah. But sometimes it's always good to pick all the thick ones at once and then separate them from the thin ones because sometimes you can grab a bundle and there's too many thick ones and not enough weaving ones mm. in our basket weaving when Aunty Dory taught us how to weave uh, she took us out on the land We'd pick these rushes, they're freshwater rushes, they've got a three prong top on the, the top here. Okay. But they're uh, Cypress Gymna callers. But sometimes they, they'd come back to me and say, Arnie Ellen, we didn't find those rushes. And the reason being, it's little rushes growing on the top. So what happens is these rushes grow tall, they go over and they touch the ground again and they start growing. But through us picking these rushes, we're helping them to grow. But there are freshwater rushes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And they grow all along the Coorong. Yep. Inland. And, yeah. As far as Strath, right? Yeah. And up around Murray Bridge. Uh huh. Yeah. All around the coast. Um, but more so on the on the farmers' property where we collect these rushes from, uh, just out of Meningia on the Narung Road, um, Clem Mason. Yeah. And he's actually fenced that lot of rushes off for us to keep the cattle off. So we're very thankful for that too but in this time well only dory took us out showed us where to pick rushes how to pick the rushes you're pulling them up over the ground one or two at a time uh, depending on how strong your hands are we tie them in bundles about so thick dry them out for at least two to three weeks mm -hmm. and you'll find that they're wet so we soak them to make them flexible to Great. Make them easy to weave with and how long do they take to dry out on Ellen? Two to three weeks is good. Yeah, it, okay. It's like there's an And whereabouts? So I was thinking more, what, do you just lay them out well, on the put, ground or in the sun? or? No, we, put, we put them on racks because mm -hmm. they've got an oil in them and uh, you've got to turn them. So we've got to look after that, the rushes. Mm. So we pick quite a bit because we go through a lot of rushes while we're teaching the basket weaving here at the camp, mm. at Camp Karong. But uh, yes, she, she did all that with us and, and of course my first class was the year nine class in Meningi School and that was part of art and um, that, that was the, the starting in school so it's really, really good. Mm. But uh, yeah, she shared all that with us with picking these rushes but our old people made the fish nets, the fish traps, the fish goops, the baskets to gather food, the big mats to sit on and the back warmers. So you think about all the time and effort that goes into the weaving, you think of all the stories that got told, how important it was. And of course, the blokes weaved. So you think about the stories that got told and when they came together. You think about the stories that got told. So a lot of time and effort went into um, um, making the, the baskets or the nets and things like that. So mm. it was a really, really important part mm. of their lifestyle. But what I'm going to do is get a few rushes. We usually have the thick ones. You think about it, they didn't have scissors back then. It what would did have they taken, cut them with? They had, they had good teeth and shell. So you think about the time, it would have taken them a bit longer to weave. So there's my centre bit. And what I'm going to choose now is a thin one to Show weave me with. centre bit. That's the centre bit there. Mm -hmm. So that's the thickness, right. so I'm going to mm -hmm. work it, mm -hmm. right? And what I'm going to do now is put the first stitch on. And if you take notice, I'm a right-hander. I place it there like that. 
and I'm working away from myself. Mm -hmm. I go over to my left. Now see I've made that loop? Mm -hmm. Bring it up through and tie a knot. And that's the very first stitch. And what I do is go over, under, and bring it up through. Over. Now, in our teaching, we usually do about 10, 10 or 20 stitches. But you can put as many as you want on, depending on the size and the shape of your basket or the pattern that you make on your mat. Now, what I'm going to show you is a don't. If you go like that, don't go like that. Don't bring it up through there like that. Always bring it straight up. And see I'm cre creating the outside loops? Yep. Right. Like I said, anything from 10 to 20 stitches. So there we go. Now what I need to do is create a corner and by doing that I grab hold of the stitches and I turn it and see how I've created that turn. Cool. Now what I need to do is put some stitches on that side and by doing that I grab hold of it, I go through that loop on the other side, down under and bring it up through. See? And I work my way back to the very first stitch I've put on there. Now you can see I've run out of a lacing, a weaving one. Yeah. What you need to do is choose another thin one out of the bundle. Like I said, cut some points makes it so much quicker and easier. But see, I've left that last stitch loose. All you do is put it in under, pull that one tight, lay it down, and away you go. Fantastic. Right? Yep, that's great. Now, if the stitches are too close, there's a skewer, open, it, open them up. So I'm working my way back to the very first stitch that I've put on there. Remembering what I said, come straight up. Remembering what I said, don't go like that. Always come straight up. Now I'm back to the very first stitch I've put on there. Through Right. Mm-hmm. Show that up close there. Yep, see? Mm. Now I need to trim back these little bits here. Get rid of them out of the way. Now, it's all in feel. You can go put about six or seven of these stitches. You know how I first started off? Mm. See? There's two. It's usually the feel of it, it's usually about six or seven. It's how thick this is. Over and under, bring it up through. See? See that? And that's going to create the next corner. Fantastic. So I turn it. Mm -hmm. And then I make my connection into that very first loop that I've put on there. Mm. Through, down under, and bring it up through. through, 
down under and bring it up through. So they're the stages of the very starting of the, the weaving. Okay. Clear. Um, and what you do is you put it in front of you and away you go. Right? Okay. Yep. When you get up to this corner here, mm -hmm. you help it around. Just follow it around. No more six or sevens. Mm. You just keep working around in those loops. Mm. Right? Yep. And that's like that. You just keep going around. Yeah, perfect. Just keep going around. Now this is going to end up a mat, yeah? Mm -hmm. This, this it is going to turn out to be a mat mm -hmm. or a base of your basket. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, you see this that's starting to run out? Yes. What you need to do, if you're going to keep going and working on it, what you do is select the thicker ones. It's always good to cut a point and just put them in there like that. Okay. That's Let's how you keep this thick. close up of that. To keep this thick is just popping them in there like that. And it'll keep that thick. So you've added an extra mm. rush. In the centre. In the centre. So and that's maintaining the thickness of your the central bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you choose to make a basket, mm -hmm. all you do is hold it up. Uh-huh. You go through and pull up. Like that, see? Right. So you go through, and you pull up. And see how that's going to shape? Can you do that again? Oh, I can go see through. that. Yes. Through. Yep, let's have a close up there of that. Yep. That's important to get there. And you pull up. Oh. See, that shapes the basket up. Uh-huh. And how come those loops are getting bigger? The further you go the, out, yeah. the further you go out, the further apart they'll get. So you can either keep them together mm -hmm. or just leave that pattern as you keep going around. Okay. You can do a really tight basket weaving stitch mm. or you can do a loose stitch. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and right now, would you say that's a loose stitch then? That's a loose stitch. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you start off in here, you can mm. just keep keep them very, very close. Mm. But it, you don't recommend that when you're teaching because the stitches are too close. So it's always good to keep it apart so that they're able to visualise what's happening. Mm. So there, that's the shaping of your basket. Now, you can shape your basket to go straight up, mm -hmm. shape to go out. Mm -hmm. You can shape it to go in. It's how you work it, how you hold this piece. You can shape it to go in, you can shape it to go out that way. Wow. Or just bring it straight up. Or you could be, you could be creative mm -hmm. and make a pattern. You just weave on that on its own, mm. turn it. Oh. Yep. And that's how they actually made the patterns. Like behind you, if you look, mm. just up there, mm. that's just literally mm. pulling it out like you've just done. Yeah, we've done that on its own and now make your connection. Huh. So you plan what you're working on. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Like I said, there's your basket with the, the working of a handle. It's like doing the pattern. I've ran out of weaving bit. Just thread another one on. OK. 
Cut your points. Do that last stitch loose, in under, pull tight, hold back, away you go. Over and under. You're just weaving that thread now. Yep. To do a handle. Can I just have a look and how at how that's looking now? Yep. And I'll just turn it. See it's coming up. Yeah. Great. Okay. Perfect. And usually a basket this size, that handle did weave to the end of there, connect in on this side. Yep. Yep. See? So. Yep, which you've allowed for there. Hmm. Yeah, it's great. And connect and then just bring that around and you're finished. And taper it off again. Yeah, and taper it off. Great. But that's a, the, the planning of a handle. Brilliant. Trim it off and just take it away. See? And you'll weave to the end of that. And you'll connect it in. Yep, right to the end. The outside. Hmm. I'll just show you. You go mm -hmm. through. I work my way right down to the end of this piece. Mm -hmm. You get a close up of just you putting that through. And again, mm -hmm. all right. So you're making a loop. I'm going right and to you're the connecting end of it. it. I'm going to connect another piece. Weaving. You always leave your last stitch loose. Put it in under, pull tight, hold back, and away you go. And why do you keep trimming it? I'm thinning it off so I can taper it off and work towards the end. Mm. Through. Almost there. Okay, so you're right, yeah, you're right. I'm almost there, there now. Yeah. Going right to the end. One more bit there. Go through. Beautiful. That's done. Mm. And so you've got this weaving bit left. Mm. All you do is thread it back through. Mm. See? Yeah. Before you trim it off.
I reckon that'll be about enough. See? Mm-hmm. I'll just thread it back in so it doesn't come undone on you. And that's the finished piece.